Amen. It is great to be here to worship, to be reminded of how great it, great God is and what He has done for us. As you may have known, we have over the past couple of weeks been looking at this question of what is God asking you to do? What is God asking you to do? Because every single one of us, God is asking us to do something in our life. No matter where we find ourselves, God is asking you to do something today. And what I want to do is continue that because we've been looking at this idea of what is God asking you to do to share what He has done for you? What is God asking you to do to show the love that He has displayed to us? Today, what we're going to look at is this idea of what is God asking you to do to pray? Now, you may say, well, Brother Paul, we know we're supposed to pray. We've always been taught that in church. But what does it really mean for you to be able to say, I am going to pray to God? Now, many of us may say that we know this God we're praying to, but do we really know this God that we're praying to and what he wants to do for you? Because God is asking you to do something today. And what is that? The greatest thing, the greatest thing that you and I can do right now is to discover what God is asking you to do at this moment because it's different for each and every one of us. For some of you, God is saying, I know it's tough, but stay awake. For some of you, God is saying, put down the phone. Unless you're reading your Bible on it. For some of us, God is saying, just listen because I want you today. Have you ever thought about that before? That God is asking you to do something great today because he's a great God. He only does great things. He created you, and that was great because you are great. I sound like a commercial. I should go, great, and then won't go there. What is God asking you to do today? God is asking us to pray. There's three things that I want to share with us about prayer that's going to help us to understand this a little more because it's very important for us to understand what God really wants to do in your life. And part of that is through you praying to him. Now, why is God asking us to pray? God can do everything. He's great. God is all powerful. He can do things without us. Why is he asking you and I to pray to him? Because it's very important. It's not just taking out a list and saying, okay, God, here are the things I need you to do. Here are the things I want you to take care of in my life. Here's the things that you've promised you were going to do in my life. So take care of those things. It's not just that because God wants to do more in your life through you praying to him. And here's why he's wanting to do this. The first thing is God wants us to pray because prayer is a choice. Prayer is a choice that you have. You don't have to pray to God, but yet God says, I want you to do that. Why? Because when we choose to pray to God, and you'll follow along in your bulletin, what that does is we acknowledge who God is. We acknowledge who God is. Now, the amazing thing about this church is when you and I pray, we can pray because we know there is a God. We can pray because we know there is a God. But what I want you and I to understand is that when we pray, we need to acknowledge the God. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not just that, okay, I'm supposed to pray because I'm a follower of Jesus. I've, told, I've been taught in Sunday school I'm supposed to pray, so God, here's my prayer. It's going up there. It's going to the man upstairs. But what you and I have to understand is that in order for us to be able to relate to God the way he wants, God is asking us to pray to him because of who he is. Because of who he is. Have you ever stopped and thought about that before? In your life, students, have you ever thought, okay, who is God really to me today? Who is God to me today? And when we do that, what we do is we acknowledge him. So prayer is a choice that you and I have to acknowledge God. And we have to understand what we are acknowledging. So let me ask you this, this question. Why is God asking you to pray to acknowledge him because maybe we don't really understand God. Maybe it's we've never prayed in this way before to see God for who he is. In the midst of everything that we're going through right now in your life, all the struggles, all the pain, all the things you've gone through, all the temptations that you face, all the addictions and the behaviors that you know are wrong, how do you acknowledge God in the midst of all of that? God says you do it through prayer. And that's why I want you to pray, is to acknowledge. The prophet Hosea says in Chapter 6, verse 3. Let us acknowledge the Lord. 
Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of hearing about rain. I'm like, God, come on, we've had enough, you know? But you know what I told the early service? Guess what? The sun is shining. It's shining right now. We just can't see it because of the clouds and the rain. But it's up there, and we know that. Why? Because we've seen it before. We've experienced. And God says the sun will shine. Well, just as it will shine, God says, I want you to acknowledge me because I'm the God of the sun. I'm the God of the rain. I'm the God of everything. Acknowledge me. So why is God asking us to pray? Because it's a choice you and I have to acknowledge who he is. A God who can take care of the people that hate us. A God who can take care of and provide for us in the ways that we don't necessarily need, but that he will. We choose to acknowledge God when we pray. Another thing that prayer allows us to do is, is it's a choice to submit ourselves to God. It's a choice to submit ourselves to God. When we come along and we say, oh God, okay, God, I'm going to acknowledge you, what we're basically doing is seeing him for who he is, so we submit ourselves to him. We say, God, I know who you are, and I know you can do great things. So when we pray to him, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, God, take care of everything. It would be like saying, Brandon, whatever you need me to do, I'm going to do. What, you just say the word, and I'm going to do that. It's me giving myself, submitting myself to him. And when we choose to do this to God, we acknowledge who he is. But we also say, God, you're big enough to do whatever you want. And I'm going to let you. <laughs> now, I can see some of the expressions on your face like, oh, uh, I don't know about that one, Paul. <laughs> but you see... Prayer is a choice that we have to acknowledge God, to submit ourselves to, to God. Scripture teaches that, a very familiar passage in James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves then to God. And you say, oh, that's simple, Paul. <laughs> you see, but God allowed us to journey through this because when we pray and say, God, I know who you are, we acknowledge who he is, and I know you're going to do what you need to do. So when God says, this is why I want you to pray. Because it's your choice. But when you choose, you choose to acknowledge <laughs> me. You choose to submit to me. You also choose to focus on me. When we pray, we choose to focus upon God. Now let's face it. There are so many things in our life today that can distract us. There are so many people who come in and try to take the place of our priority in our life. There's so many struggles and things that are out there that keep piling upon us that can distract us. But when we choose to pray to acknowledge God and to know that he's a great God and to focus upon him, then all these other things seem to kind of minimize in their importance in our life. They kind of begin to get behind us as we stay focused upon God. And you say, well, okay, Paul, again, that's easier said than done. Yes, but God has given us the opportunity to be able to do that. Why? Because when we choose, choose, listen church, when you and I choose, we take a step of faith. And that's what God wants to do in our lives to change us so we can see him for who he is. When you pray, you are choosing to acknowledge God. I hope you and I are choosing to acknowledge God and to submit to him and to stay focused upon him. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. Jesus says you need to seek after me. Why? Because that's an act of prayer as we acknowledge who God is. The apostle Paul says this in Romans chapter 8 verse 5, those who live according to the sinful nature, listen, have their minds set on what that nature desires. 
But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. You see, when we pray, we are acknowledging God and focusing upon God and submitting to God. Therefore, we see God for who He is. So why does God want you to pray? So that you and I can see Him for who He is. A great God who is doing great things and he wants to do great things in your life. Regardless of what you've done or where you've been, uh, that's an amazing song. How can it be that God would look down upon you and me in all of our sinfulness and to see us with love? How can that be? Why does God want us to pray? Because he wants us to choose to see him for that. For who he is. I just want us to look at this. Look at this next slide. I praise you God because you are. You see when we choose to pray to God. That's basically what we're doing. Acknowledging God. Saying I praise you because you are. And you can fill in the blank. In fact, right now, let's just take a minute. And I want everybody to stop what you're doing. And what we're going to do is we're going to close our eyes and we're going to say this statement to God. I praise you, God, because you are and whatever it is. Because this is our choice. And you can choose not to today. I'm not forcing you to do it. But this is our opportunity to be able to pray to acknowledge God for who he is. So let's take a few moments and you in your heart and mind complete that statement. Let's pray together. Father God, I come to you today humbled to be in your presence. And I praise you today, God, Because you are salvation to me. In the midst of all the things that I fail at. God you love me. And you are my salvation. So I praise you today. In Jesus name. Amen. You see what we do when we pray. Is we choose to acknowledge who God is. Second thing that I want to share with you today, why is God asking us to pray, is because prayer is comfort. Prayer is comfort. Now, what do you mean by that, Paul? Comfort. Comfort is like that warm blanket on a cold day that you can snuggle up on the couch when you don't have anything to do. Comfort is sunshine after a storm as it comes and warms your skin as it comes down upon you. Comfort is that person that just brings laughter into your life. Comfort is the ability to be able to be where you are and not fear anything. That is comfort. Well, how can we in prayer experience comfort? Because prayer, when we choose to pray, prayer brings us into the presence of God. Prayer brings us into the presence of God. It's an amazing thing as we look all throughout Scripture and see every incidence where God says, Come into my presence and there I will be. Prayer is <clears throat> comfort because we are in the presence of God. In James chapter 4, verse 8, it says this, Come near to God and he will come near to you. This is a promise from God's word that says, If you will come after me, I'm going to be there. How many times in your life and in my life do we find ourselves and we ask, God, where are you? Where have you been? I need you now. Well, God's never left. It's just that we've been distracted and our focus has not been upon him and we don't see what he's doing. God is there. It's like he's never left And we're the ones who have lost the focus. In prayer, when we choose to acknowledge God and submit ourselves and focus upon Him, prayer brings us comfort because we're in the presence of God. The presence of a holy God. Again, going back to that song, how can it be that somebody as unholy as me can be in the presence of a holy God? How can I lift my dirty hands up to Him? It's only through Jesus that can that happen. And it's through prayer that we get to experience that. I love the Psalms because in so many cases, it, for me, it paints a picture 
of what it's really like to be in the presence of God. I mean, think about it. Of all the attacks that David had upon him, of all the struggles, of all the failures that he had in his life, and yet he's still able to see God for who he is and acknowledge that. How many times in your and my life, folks, do we find ourselves so far from God because of things we've done, because of the circumstances, because of our failings, because of the sinfulness, or because whatever it is out there that we have, that we can be able to come to God and say, God, in your presence, in Psalms chapter 16, verse 11, it says, you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with the joy of your presence. You see, this tells me God has a plan for each and every one of us where we are at right now in your life. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for me. And to be in his presence is going to bring such a great joy. I love the psalm in Psalms 139. Let's look at this together. Psalms 139, starting in verse 7, it says this. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Isn't it an amazing thing to know that no matter what has happened in our life, that God is going to be there, His presence is always available to us, and all that you and I have to do is to pray and say, God, you are God, and I am thankful that you are here. Again, some of you today are saying, Paul, that's easier said than done. Paul, you just don't know what I have in my life. Paul, you don't know what I'm going to have to give up to be in the presence of God. And do you know what? You have the choice to experience the freedom of Christ and be in the presence of a holy God who loves you. But it's your choice today. And what is God asking you to do? God is asking you to pray. To acknowledge him for who he is. To find comfort in his presence. If I was to ask you to complete this statement, what would you say? Today I thank you God because I have what? Today God I thank you because I have what? Let's take a moment, and you right now have the choice to pray and to thank God for what he has done for you, whether it's his presence or something great. Let's pray together. Today, God, as we acknowledge you for who you are, I thank you because I have strength in your presence. To know that you're a God who is able to do great things and to know that I am in the presence of a powerful God. I thank you, God, that I have strength today to do the things that you've called me to do. In Jesus' name, amen. You see, you and I have the choice to be able to acknowledge God through praying to him. Also, you and I have the opportunity to see his comfort and his presence because he is with us. Third thing that I want to share with you today is that God is asking us to pray because it is a command. Because it, God asks us and tells us to pray. In fact, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 8, Jesus says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. 
He who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be open. So whatever I want, Scripture says that I can ask, right? <laughs> Go ahead. Because sometimes when we ask for things, we don't really want the answer. Sometimes when we say, God, take care of something, he really does. But it has nothing to do with what our plan says that should happen. You see, what happens a lot of times, God says, I want you to experience me, so I'm asking you to ask me. All through Scripture, we say, listen, pray to God, fast, focus upon Him, and then see what God can do in your life. But sometimes, church, what you and I do is we're a little afraid of what God might do, so we don't really ask what we need to. What I mean by this is saying, God, I need to do better in this area of my life, but I don't really want you to work. Hopefully, you've never said that before. Because I know you're better than I am. Because I fail sometimes. Or sometimes we say, God, you need to give me more love. And do you know what? He's going to give you an opportunity to show love. Especially people that it's difficult with. Why? Because he's God and he can do great things. You ask, he shall give. How many of you have ever done this? God, I need patience. It's, see there? You know. You know. When we pray for patience, God is going to give you an opportunity to have patience. Why? Because he's going to give it to you. You can't have it. So God will give us patience. But sometimes God says, just ask and see what I can do. But you see, it's not just asking. We have to be very careful. The Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, he says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for all the saints. Now, the Apostle Paul says, pray in the Spirit, which means we have to pray in the mindset of Christ. We have to pray with the ability to be able to be focused upon Him. Because remember, when we pray, we choose to acknowledge God. And when we pray, we are focused upon Him. Even when there's distractions. <laughs> we pray to see God for who He is. But we also do it because God says, I want to show you how I can work. But we have to be very careful about that because Jesus even said in Matthew chapter 6, listen church, he said, be careful not to be like the hypocrites. Be very careful when you pray. Don't do it where people are going to take notice. Don't do it on the street corners. He said in chapter 6 of Matthew, he said, be careful. Don't be like them. Don't stand in public just to be heard in public. Don't use big words to be thought of as intelligent. Don't go on babbling. Don't do these things. But he said, go to your place and seek your father and ask your father. So what Jesus is saying is that when we pray, listen, when we pray, we have to acknowledge God, not ourselves. We have to be focused upon Him and what He does, not ourselves. We have to say, God, I am in Your presence. I am in Your presence of a holy God. So you do these things. This is what we have to stay focused upon. Because listen to this. I've been reading a book. I've been reading a book that is called One Cry. And, I, and I've skimmed through this book a number of times, but I'm actually going back through and reading it again because this is a book about needing prayer for our nation. Needing revival in our nation. Having an awakening happen like we've had in year, years past to be able to see God's hand at work. And one of the things that I remember that struck me was this. It said that praying is not seeking a response. Now listen to me. Praying is not seeking a response. It's seeking the relationship. Let me say that again. Prayer is not seeking a response, but a relationship for you and I to have with God. So you see, when we pray, it's not God take care of everything. It's God, you're God, and I'm not. I'm in your presence of a holy God. God, I'm asking you to do this. 
And some of us today, if you don't hear anything else, some of us today, the only thing that we need to do is to recognize that when I pray, I am asking a God who is greater than me do some things that I've never seen before so that I can be changed like I've never been changed before. That's what God wants to do. So when he asks this question, why should you pray? What are you going to say? Well, I just need to because it's one of the things I'm supposed to do. I'm obligated to do because I have to. The food's better when I pray over it, right? We just do those things in our life because we have to. But God says, no, I want you to pray so that you can see me for who I am and experience the great things that I have given you. One of the greatest examples of this, Jesus himself said this prayer in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. He said, going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, listen to his words, Yet not I will, but as you will. Sometimes God is saying, Pray to me so that I can show you my plan for your life. A plan that will help you to overcome those struggles. A plan that will help you to get out of that funk that you're in. A plan that will help you to get through life with the fellowship of my presence. This is what I want for you. So when God says, this is why I want you to pray. And let me ask you this. How would you finish this statement today? I ask for your will. And what is that? You may think, oh, Paul, that's the million-dollar question. Finding out what, what is God's will for your life. If I asked you students and said, tell me God's will for your life, what would it be? Adults, if I said, tell me God's will for your life, what would it be? Because you see, God is asking each and every one of us to do something for him. God is asking each and every one of us at this moment For some of us, it's the fact that we need to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior because we've never experienced these things before. We don't know what it's like to acknowledge God. We don't understand what it's like to be under His will. We don't know what it's like to journey in faith with the Savior who died for my sins. I don't know what it's like to be free from the bondage. And yet God says, pray, because I want you to see me for who I am, know my comfort, and be able to see my hand at work. Why does God want us to pray? God wants us to pray to acknowledge Him. And see Him for who He is. God wants you and I to pray because He wants us to be in His presence. God is asking us to pray so that we can ask for His will. Now today, God may be asking you, what is it that you need to do in your life? Maybe it's those things you hold on to that you need to give up. You know what? God says, listen, just pray to me and I'll show you the way. I'll help you. I'll give you the strength. I'll remind you of my truth. I'll do all those things. Maybe God is saying you just need to get rid of those things in your life that distract you because you need to stay focused. God is saying, listen, if you'll just pray to me and ask me, you will see things like you've never done before. Now, does that mean that God's going to part the river? Does that mean that, uh, you know, it's going to rain and continue to rain for 40 days and 40 nights till we see another flood? I sure hope not. But God has a way of doing things that we don't realize. But when we pray... We see God for who he is and what he can do. And some of you, some of you experience that because you've seen God's hand at work in your life. You know what God can do in your life. What is God asking you to do today? Let's pray.